it's not easy to become an eye doctor. But whether or not you're thinking about getting your degree in optometry or you've already gotten it, this video is to help you open your mind to the possibilities of the many, many, many things you can do with an OD degree. I'm gonna divide this video into two parts. Part one is all the modalities and specialties that you can go into, and part two is the types of practices you can be in. Part one, just real quick, is different things you can specialize in, and this is a list of residencies that there are. So you have family practice, geriatrics, pediatrics, vision therapy and rehab, cornea and contact lens, neurooptometry, low vision rehab, brain injury rehab, community optometry, and of course, refractive and ocular surgery or disease. Now for types of practice, the first one is an associateship, being in the private practice sphere of things. Now this is just you as an optometrist own a practice or work at an optometry owned practice. And this even includes an MD OD practice where you work with an ophthalmologist. So this is just kind of you work at an eye clinic Day in, day out, you take patients, and you can specialize in whatever you wanted to specialize in. You just open up shop, you're the entrepreneur, or you work for someone who's opening up shop and is the entrepreneur. When they think of an optometrist, this is what most people think of. And it's a great thing to do, and it's probably what I want to do, but maybe this isn't for everybody. Number two is you can go corporate. Now, I know what you're thinking, corporate, Ooh, corporate optometry taking over, but not all corporate optometry is bad. Things that come to mind, you know, America's Best, Eyeglass World, Costco, Walmart, but there's actually a variety of them and you need to specify them by contract, but there's what's called leased and non-leased corporate. So you can do a non-leased where you are literally just a W-2 employee, clock in, clock out, you work for that practice or corporate office, or there's lease, which is actually more common than you'd think. So Walmart is a common place that leases, so is Costco, where you are your own office, you have like your own business under your name, but you just lease out the space at Walmart to, um, to work there. In a non-lease, you wouldn't really own your patients. Like if you wanted to get up and leave one day, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to take your patients with you. But in a leased space, those patients are yours in most cases, you know, depending on the contracts you sign. But yeah, you have a little bit more freedom with, a le with leasing through corporate than you do of just being a W-2 employee working for the corporate office, if that makes sense. So you'd still have a little bit more freedom in corporate than you might think. The next one is called an HMO group. So an HMO is like a health maintenance organization. It's kind of a type of insurance. So if you think I have this type of insurance and they have a brick and mortar building, it's kind of those groups where you have to be in network. So for example, growing up, Kaiser was an HMO group that I went to because I had Kaiser insurance. You can work for an HMO like Kaiser or Cigna. And yeah, it's you basically just be an employee there. And you have some more pros and cons to being an HMO that I really won't go into into this video, but know that that's something out there that's really common. Now the fourth modality is working for the government. Now the government has a lot of jobs for optometry and they do offer, you know, government benefits. So whether, that, whether or not that's working for the VA, the Veterans Hospital, as an optometrist there in kind of a hospital setting, or working for the military and going around from base to base in whatever branch of the military you sign up with, or you can also go through the IHS, the uh, Native American Indian Health Service. And basically those are just normal optometry jobs that you'd feel like you're just doing a private practice or corporate kind of thing, but you're employed by the government. And, and those also have some pros and cons to it as well. The next one is a little underrated and that's academia or academia, however you pronounce it. But that's basically giving back and helping other people become optometrists by working at a school. Now it's not just teaching, you can get involved in different ways, being an adjunct, supervisors, deans, all that good stuff. But basically, it's good because you're giving back and helping the next generation of optometrists. Now you can also go into research and industry. Now any product that you think of out there, or any product or pharmaceutical that you can think of out there, 
that has to do with the eye is probably going to consult eye doctors for, for a lot of what they're doing. And you can be that eye doctor. Now, a lot of optometrists work for Johnson & Johnson, all the big pharmacy companies out there. A lot of optometrists will work for Essilor, Luxottica, which is, I guess, the same company now. Or really any like VR video game company, they'll have reps too. I know that's not as big of an industry, but basically, if you wanna go into research or get your like PhD in vision science through one of the schools as well that offer that, um, there's, some, there's great opportunity as an eye doctor to go into industry and kind of consult and do some research and in that field as well. And the last one I'll touch on is more of a locum tenens, not long-term kind of work that you can do. Optometry is famous for being super flexible and working with your schedule. You can take on part-time or fill temporary positions or get a job at any of these practices, maybe not any of them, but private practices at least in corporate as well, uh, just a few days a week, depending on your schedule. So really, in optometry, the world is your oyster, and you can do a ton more. Go ahead and leave comments down below if I forgot anything, and hopefully this helped you know what you can do with your optometry degree. Feel free to follow me on social medias down in the description, and I'll see you in the next video.